While your day is winding down, they're just getting started. This is South Coast Tonight with Chris McCarthy and Marcus Farrow. They've got you covered on all the news of the day, from local issues to politics on both sides of the aisle. This is the place where the movers and shakers come to be heard, to listen, and where they're held accountable. This is South Coast Tonight on WBSM. Hey, welcome to South Coast Tonight. I'm Marcus. 508-996-0500 is how you can join me this evening. Also taking your messages on the WBSM app chat. Again, I want to thank uh, Dr. Brian Glenn Williams uh, for joining me in the uh, 8 o'clock hour. I thought really interesting stuff and um, really important conversations. And Adam Bass for joining me, for fighting through the poor reception uh, that he had on his phone and uh, giving us his um, his reporting on the uh, Mayor Mitchell's uh, proposal to scale back those pay raises. What I will say is it's kind of, I think, a motivator to get back... Um, I mean, get to WBSM.com and check out the story. You don't have to worry about Adam's poor cell phone reception all the way up in Needham or wherever he is. You don't have to worry about it. You can just uh, you can just read it, right? It's just there. It's in print. It's in print. There's no audio companion. Some some places do that. They have a little audio companion. Although I think you you, you can have a there is a setting that you can have uh, in your in your in your browser, like that'll read it to you, that'll dictate it to you if you need that, which is fine. But that'll come out clear again because the words are already there. It's just dictating the words that are on paper. There's no there's no extra communication needed, so it won't be a there won't be a poor reception there. It'll be crystal clear. Crystal clear for you. So, And then Adam, of course, will be with us on Thursday, giving us the lowdown. But until then, I'm joined by you, uh, 508-996-0500. we got Will Senat on tomorrow from the Bedford Light as well. I'm looking forward to talking with Will. Always a good story, um, and he's been uh, doing a great job in the Bedford Light. So he's got uh, he's been reporting on a lot of the stuff that's happening in the waterfront, uh, and he's got a um, recent piece on the fishing industry, and we'll talk with him more about it on on Tuesday. So five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. What I wanted to start the third hour with, and, and again, this is open. Open phone line, so if you want to call in, interrupt me about, about something else, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, also taking your message on the WBSM app chat. So what, one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit is an experience that I had. And because, you know, you hear a lot of pessimism about South Coast Rail, right? Uh, it's coming at the end of the year. It's going to be here in November. And some people, one of the things that... One of the causes for pessimism, other than just people like that want to be pessimistic, is the ride time. The ride time is going to be about 90 minutes, right? And there was an alternative that could have been taken, which was the Stoughton route, but that wasn't really practically possible. And that Stoughton route would have been 77 minutes instead of uh, 77 minutes instead of 90 minutes, which makes a huge difference obviously you know being in the 70 minute range versus being in the 90 minute range makes a huge difference of course it does however i drove up to boston on friday i drove up to boston um at like 10 30 so it wasn't even peak rush hour i no 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 that's not true actually i left at 12 sorry i had breakfast at 10 30 it was my birthday so my mom took me to breakfast I had breakfast at uh, Just Another Phoenix. Great advertising partner with us. Tim did a remote show there. You should go check them out. Um, they are real, they are as good as advertised, and they're as good as advertised here on WBSM. So we really enjoyed it. 
But I breakfast with her at ten thirty, just another Phoenix. Then we went. Then I mean, then I went. I went up to Boston, and boy, was that traffic bad. And it was again. It was around twelve o'clock. I left, so I got down there around. I got there around. I got into Boston probably around twelve forty-five, one o'clock. But that's when everything started getting bumper to bumper. And when you think you've cleared it, you get into another bumper to bumper situation, and so. It probably took me from the time I got to that ninety th- to that split at the end of twenty four another hour to get to where I needed to go, which was the north end. Probably took me an hour to get there, and then you have to pay for parking, right? You have to pay additional money for parking and all of that. I had a nice time. But the point I'm trying to make is I remember being up there, being in that traffic the whole time, it taking so long to get there, about probably at the end of the day, probably about two hours to get through all of that. And the whole time I'm driving, right? The whole time I'm driving. So it took me about two hours to get through all of that. The whole time I was thinking about how inane, how silly it was to gripe about the wait, the, the ride time on South Coast Rail. To say that the ride time makes that project not worth it. That people won't do it because of the ride time. Well, 90 minutes, I'm going to tell you, uh, especially for people who are commuting to work, 90 minutes is definitely going to be shorter than the amount of time you'll have to budget to commute up there. And it's going to be probably shorter than the amount of time you'd have to budget to commute up there in general. And then when you get there, you don't have to pay for parking, right? You don't have to worry about where you're going to park because that in and of itself, you don't have to navigate the historically, the the record-breakingly bad public infrastructure, uh, roadway, I mean roadway infrastructure of Boston, probably the worst infrastructure of any major metropolitan area in the country. I've been to New York. I've been to Houston, I've been to Tampa, you know, Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have been other places too, where despite having probably more people in a lot of situations, especially like Houston, it's a much more navigable place. But I wanted to go on that ramp because I was like thinking the whole time, of course, because that's how I, you know, I just think about this stuff all the time. I was thinking the whole time about how, boy, I can't wait till I can just take the train up here. I can't wait till I can just take the train up to Boston and not have to worry about the commute time, not have to worry about the parking. Because, again, I'm driving. The whole thing is, is even if it takes 90 minutes on a train versus 90 minutes in a car, give me the 90 minutes on the train. And, by the way, it takes way more than 90 minutes uh, in the car. But give me the 90 minutes in the train. I can hang out. I could do some work if I want to. I could I could take a nap. I could do many of, I I could do a great, um, I could do a great many things that wouldn't involve tapping my foot on the brake every three seconds, getting inches and inches closer to the Tip O'Neill tunnel and hopefully getting to where I need to go. So for, and I don't know who's had any experiences commuting up to Boston re- uh, recently, um, but uh, and maybe some people like the drive. I don't know if you're one of those people. Um, I you're you're a you are a um if if you're one of those people, you're. Uh, You're an interesting person, I, I suppose. I'd like you to be a guest on the show. <laughs> if you're one of those people, you're that interesting. But that was one of the things I thought of when I was driving up to when I was driving up to Boston. Like, boy, I would love to have South Coast Rail. I'd love to just be able to get off the train and get to where I need to go. Um, get off at South Station and just go. That Stoughton route will come. We'll get the 77-minute commute, but that 90-minute commute, I really think it's going to go a long way for people. I really do think it's going to improve access to Boston and vice versa because Boston, when you get there, is a cool place, right? There's a lot going on, obviously, with its history and just it being a major metropolitan area. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to enjoy there. 
But the problem is, is no one's going to go. Everybody avoids going up to Boston because of the traffic congestion. No one wants to drive up there. And I know the Middleborough train's there too, but it's to it's a one thing if you live in Fairhaven or Dartmouth or New Bedford and you just drive to the Whale's Tooth parking lot or over to Church Street, park your car and go. It's another thing to drive 30 some odd minutes to Lakeville uh, slash Middleborough, whichever one it's at, Lakeville or Middleborough, and then take the train in and then you have budget another hour into commute time. It's a completely different thing and I think really is going to prove access. Improve access. 508-996-0500. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, Marcus. How you doing? So you had a good time on your birthday? Yeah, I had fun. Yeah, well, I would have told you to go to Providence instead. Why drive you know, up I, to I Boston go, for? I go to, I go to Providence. Providence yeah, is I easy. Go. I go to Pro- I've gone to Providence yeah. enough. I was like, I'm going to go to Boston. I good enjoyed food it. There. You have yeah. good food there, things to do. Yeah, Why I, am I going to drive an hour up there? Yeah, well, I don't drive I anymore do. anyway. So. Yeah, it's just something I wanted to do. I haven't been to Boston. Like, I haven't been up to Boston to for, like, any sort of, like, enjoyment or fun in, in a long time because um, I don't really like to drive up there but I enjoyed it at a, at a good time so yeah well let's say uh, for example you have 90 minutes on a train mm-hmm. right on a good day and that's not to mention in the winter with snowstorms and if there's no mechanical failures mm-hmm. and delays because I mean it could be if you work in Boston it could be 90 minutes if you have problems it could be uh, two hours three hours yeah. Just one way. Yeah, it could be you if you might get, not, you, Go ahead. Could Marcus. be if there's a car accident on 24 or 93, too. Well, the derailments, uh, you know, passenger car fires, mm-hmm. electrical, um, you know, and mechanical failures. Yeah. Uh, it could be you don't, you don't make it back home mm-hmm. in time. You'd have to stay at a hotel because of maybe the train has uh, been canceled for the night. Yeah, I even heard of trains being like all trains being canceled. It's I mean, there's definitely it's something to be said about the MBTA getting into a better state of repair. But um, all that stuff that you mentioned is also delays that could happen if you're in your car. There could be accidents on 93. There could be accidents on 24. There could be accidents on both ways. When you come in, you go out. 24 is a dangerous highway on um, that whole area uh, of getting into Boston. pretty dangerous and accidents happen over there all the time. Some so that stuff can, take- those, uh, those, those hazards in a lot of ways are actually a lot worse um, than I believe in terms of train, uh, it, you know, traveling. Um, I think cars are significantly more dangerous than trains are. Well, not in Massachusetts with a, a number of derailments. You know, one guy had to jump off uh, the bridge. Well, that the, the car was on fire. The car was on fire. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, it was bad. Uh, it's bad. Yeah, you know, it was some bad. Some people take the dead cold bus. Mm-hmm. Take the dead, which is you know less time, and uh, yeah, you get to take the car. The rides. You get to take the carpool ride. Uh, the carpool lane up there. I know some people have done the uh, the bus. Uh, I, I don't know if they. I don't know if they prefer. It. Maybe they do, but I don't know. I don't know if they prefer it to yeah. to the train. Well, let me just say this. You know, with uh, you know, they keep talking about uh, going up to Boston for jobs, but the way the economy is, you know, with Meta and Goldman Sachs and Amazon, UPS, FedEx, Walmart, Google, a lot of layoffs. Yeah, the the and, Silicon Valley's been having uh, the Silicon Valley companies have been having massive layoffs. Yeah, yeah. Bank of America mm-hmm. layoffs. So. I mean, at the rate this is going, because the Fed keeps going up on the interest rates, and then inflation is going up, you have a stagflation, uh, you know, uh, then what? If you've got no job to go to in Boston, I don't see too much ridership uh, going to Boston. Yeah, um, so I think the, the, the majority, like finance is obviously, you know, I'm not saying finance is like a non-zero hire of uh of people up in Boston, but the majority, like the Boston's biggest industry overwhelmingly is uh, life sciences. And I don't think there's been uh, as, um, as big of a, I don't think there's been a, a, a real downturn in, in that area. And, and in fact, actually one of their fears is that the, if, if there aren't projects like railways and all of that, the life sciences is actually going to grow beyond what the um, infrastructure, the, the transportation infrastructure of Boston can handle. Right. So they're going to have a problem in Boston, not only Boston, but New York City. 
uh, with office space, you know, these layoffs, you're going to have empty. And we know that this has been happening, especially during uh, COVID, many people working from home. Mm-hmm. And not only that, the, the, the lease, the, the cost of lease and, you know, the overhead companies are just having many people work from home. So that's other problems that these uh, major cities are going to face. There's a lot of empty uh, empty uh, office space in these uh, skyscrapers. Yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, commercial real estate, it, they, I think they've got to find uh, other ways to develop those uh, those spaces besides office space because we knew commercial real estate was going to take a huge hit after COVID because a lot of people realized that bringing people to work is sort of just a way to justify <laughs> having commercial real estate expenses because a lot of people can do this work from home and do it more efficiently and better. Oh, absolutely, especially now with, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence, AI. Yeah. And it's, uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, 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 Microsoft, uh, the the Bing search engine. Uh, There's a company called OpenAI, and they have a bot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some call it a robot, some call it a chat bot, where a reporter was having an interview with a, with that uh, very highly sophisticated bot, yeah, and uh, and and he wanted to be real. He wanted to be as human as possible. Yeah, I had in a, a conversation. Yeah, I don't com- know if you heard about it. I didn't hear about that. I did have Congressman Auchincloss on a, a couple weeks ago, and he talked about a little bit about uh, the speech he delivered on the on the House floor that was completely generated by AI, and it was like a very well delivered and good speech. And he said that the newer model that 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 uh, spit out a speech for him, he said it was better than anything he could have written. So, it's, yeah. I was yeah. watching something on Bloomberg that now the the uh, technology is so sophisticated that two computers can have a, a, com- a conversation with one another. Yeah. Like you're saying, they can write speeches. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can even, they say that the, uh, the AI is so sophisticated, it can do, uh, uh, it can write uh, news stories. It can be... Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty scary if you it, think about it. It can also make uh, images that are pretty realistic as well. Um, they've been uh, it's been doing that. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of uh, things online, like sort of like search engine things. You type in something and it'll it'll spit it'll spit that image out, or more or less, you know. Well, even that, uh, that a- open uh, AI robot even told him that his his marriage wasn't going to work. That he should uh, get oh. together with a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, well, you have a good night, Marcus. It's it, good to hear that you had a good time on your birthday. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Thanks good, very much. Have a good night. You as well. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred is how you can join me this evening. Um, tell you what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. This is South Coast tonight. New Bedford's News Talk Station. 508-996-0500 is so how you can join us. Good evening, you're live. Hey, Marcus, how you doing today? Hey, Tom, I, I, got, I haven't spoken to you since I got your uh, your correspondence. Um, yes, yeah, I thought it was interesting that I was emptying my files, and I said, well, here's, here's some statistical knowledge that we were probably not looking at properly. Yeah. But what I, and that's why I called on the what, three race. You guys are having a debate this week with them? Wednesday. Wednesday's the debate. Yeah. Okay. And would you be able to tell me, uh, Carmen Amaral, is she of Portuguese descent or Hispanic? Descent? Portuguese. She's uh, she she's from the Azores. Um, her she immigrated here when she was young with her parents. Uh, she's got actually a very good story about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was interested in that part. As far as the article was concerned, one of the things you know in that particular race, going back, you know, the the, the amount of people that came up in the primary. Uh, was interesting to me. And then the three precincts that were dominant, still uh, the same three precincts that were dominant in this uh, last uh, special election. Yeah. So, you know, the, the candidates got their work cut out for it. Cause it's still, to me, a, a pretty open race, regardless of the endorsements that have been flying around. And uh, I'm, I'm real interested to hear the debate. I, I think that that can show a lot uh, for the for the candidates' positions on going to be a very uh, active uh, Ward 3 uh, geographically for the next couple of years anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the interesting things about the preliminary was uh, it looked like Bromley was pretty far, like pretty 
clearly ahead of the pack with Oliver. Oliver was definitely leading the whole, the whole time, but Bronny looked like he was pretty safe in this in second place. But um, Amaral's precinct, which is a high voting precinct, turned out for her. So um, yeah, that turned the tide. That one that was sort of exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was actually. It was actually exciting because we were talking the whole time, and and it seemed that way. I was getting numbers from people that it seemed like okay, this is going to be Oliver and Bromley for the final, and then at the end. Like that, all that, that was just like the last precinct that came in, I think, and really pulled her ahead, pulled her pretty far ahead of uh, of yeah. Bromley or uh, 20 30 votes, which in a race like that, you yeah, know, it was, turned it was, it upside down, it turned it upside down. Yeah, yeah it was, sure. it was really interesting. We'll see. The endorsements are, I think, are, 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 are interesting, but what's going to really matter here is, is who's, um, you know, who, who's, who's got the better ground game. Yeah, yep. yep. very interesting. Yep. Last thing was um, the uh, waterfront with the uh, mass development issue uh, at State Pier. Uh, from what I understand, that this this particular uh, company, uh, Crowley, is it? They're, they're a multinational, are they not? Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, I had some friends that went to Mass Maritime that are working for Crowley. Actually, they're they're yeah, they're a big company. So, so the question comes, you know, they, they were talking about trying to get a, a ninety nine year lease. Because of finance, I don't think financing is going to be an issue uh, with a company like that. And, and I, I think a, a reduced term on a lease is something they can live with. Uh, I, I think, you know, if, if they could just, because I think they're in the driver's seat at this point. Yeah. And with the movers and shakers from New Bedford that have have uh, really pushed for this. And, and I think if there just could be a, a bit of a tweak to satisfy what legitimately the, the state reps are. Uh, uh, looking at, for example, the the, the ice uh, uh, place, uh, which is important for the you know the unloading of uh, fruits and stuff like that, um, and, and the, of yeah, course, the, the cold storage facility. I think most of the so here's the thing. I think you know Montigny, uh, Rep Strauss was a little I think firmer on his position that he he wants to see this deal nixed because he didn't think it was done properly. Um, he uh, he said it was done basically in a clandestine and from what he uh, characterized, I think is, uh, you know, frankly illegal is what he said. But Markey and uh, Montigny were a bit more, I think, open to keeping it. Uh, They just said, we want to see a little bit more of this process to make sure everything was above board. Um, Because with Montigny, it said it, it, the, what, what, what was done jives with the vision that he had when he implemented that language into state law. Yeah, that that's the thing that that was fascinating to me. I mean, that that was an excellent night as far as us political pundits, yes. if you want to call it. It was very Mont- cool. Yeah, yeah Montigny's explanation on why he didn't sign off on the letter. Yeah, and the, the reason of, was how the legislation unfolded, and it looked like the presentation uh, that the mayor had followed the letter of the law. Mm-hmm. I, I think that was an important piece. Now that there may be some tweaking that needs to be done, but certainly when you have the city's power players, we'll call them, you know, the people that have invested in their businesses for years and years and years and uh, got on board with all this. I, I don't know how you, you, you could actually even uh, try to turn it around yeah. uh, if it's simply uh, a tweaking. So I think uh, Crowley's position uh, can change uh, to satisfy uh, with the, the state reps that, that, that want certain things to... To, to be in place, mm-hmm. but I, I don't think th- th- there's any way you're going to start this process over. You know what I mean? No, I, I think it's like you said, especially with the the, the people that are involved. You got base uh, base seafood, the Silverstein's, Crowley. It's I mean, it, you know, it's and it it frankly the the vision of it I think seems um, pretty good. Uh, but we'll, we'll I mean, I guess we'll we'll see. They're not you know they're they're not giving this up. They're they're calling on the Healy administration to basically, you know, look into this a little bit more. So it's not the last we've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any word on the Dartmouth uh, fiasco with the uh, uh, septic tank stuff? Did they get The public comment before? got extended. That was actually, oh, okay. I, I that happened, I, I don't know where I was when I got that email, but I remember like, oh, yeah, I should talk about this. But, yeah, uh, public comment has been extended on that, I believe, another month. I'll have to, I'll have to check that. I, c- I can check that. Um, in a minute, but um, I got an email from somebody on that. Uh, so that's that's the current state. Uh, I, I, I think you know 
that tells public comment being extended on this tells me that there's there's been a lot of opposition lined up. Uh, there's been a lot of um, opposition, both just in terms of people in the community and and elected officials. So, um, yep. yeah, that's something we got to track to. Uh, last but not least, we're making that. And as far as my participation, uh, uh, trying to get uh, Big Al his uh, rental support mm-hmm. tomorrow. So I'll say a prayer that that works out well. And and uh, he also may need some storage for his belongings that are still locked up yeah. down there on County Street. Yeah, there's a nice piece uh, on uh, Big Al and his situation on WBSM.com. You guys can check out. And uh, yeah. Um, you know, great guy, great caller. We uh, we all want the best for Big Al. Yep. Have a good night. You too, Tom. Thanks. So, yeah. Um, actually, let me check that. That's important, and um, we'll have to have some follow up on that conversation. Actually, in terms of the, uh, let's see, I have an email somewhere from from an email somewhere <laughs> extended. I have an email from, I think it's from somebody in Dartmouth on this public comment on the septic. Um, I'll have to find it at the break because I can't find it now. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look for that. I thought I had it somewhere. I don't know. It's in my. It's in my. It's it's one of those things. It's in your inbox. You got to dig it out. You got to find the right keyword or whatever. You know, you got to find the right keyword to to dig it out. But my, my understanding is the public comment on that's been extended, so people can actually still email the Department of Environmental Protection, which is the state's environmental, well, state's environmental protection agency. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can. Um, you can email the DEP. Uh, I believe it's t- Mass DEP Talk, something like that. I'll, I can get the email address too, which I will. I'm going to take a break. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think what I'll do now is we'll take a break. 1420 WBSM, where freedom of speech lives. It's Michael. Your voice heard right now on South Coast tonight. Yeah. Call 508-996-0500 or send an app chat message on the WBSM app. Now, back to Chris and Marcus. Yeah, so I was a little bit incorrect about that. What the? But to be fair, I don't actually know where that is at in terms of have those... Um, has that been implemented? But here's what I do have. This came out when I was on vacation. So uh, this is why... It kind of flew under the radar for me, but there is a continued discussion and updates on the Title V changes in watershed permit regulations. That is Thursday, February 23rd, 6 p.m. at the Dartmouth Middle School Auditorium. So go to, you can go to Dartmouth Middle School over there on, uh, it's on Slocum Road. Go to the Dartmouth Middle School Friday, Thursday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. They're going to be continued discussion and updates on the Title V changes and water per, watershed permit regulations. I I got a um, I got a notice of that uh, again. Like I said, when I was on vacation, so I didn't. Um, I uh, I frankly forgot about it. So I'm telling you now, and I'll remind you guys throughout the throughout the week, and uh, we'll see if we can talk to some people over there too to get more uh, information on on what's to come, but that'll be really important. We know we have a lot of people out there in Dartmouth that are, and even people that are in Dartmouth that are just, you know, concerned that this could impact them. Um, but uh, continued discussion uh, and updates on the Title V changes in watershed permit regulations. That's Thursday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. in the Dartmouth Middle School Auditorium. Again, that's that's basically surrounding uh, the new, you know, the, the septic regulations that DEP wants to implement that towns like Dartmouth and a lot of towns on the Cape, pretty much all the Cape, have uh, concerns that um, those regulations to deal with nitrogen output in the um, in uh, in public waterways, uh, those regulations could end up being um, cost prohibitive, definitely on a personal level, 
um, for people to implement septic systems, right, at that rate. But um, maybe more critically cost prohibitive uh, at a municipal level as well. So um, Chris Markey has been at the forefront of this. Uh, Mark Montigny has been at the forefront uh, of this as well, Have you know, representing Dartmouth uh, in the state house. So there'll be more to come uh, on that, and we can uh, we can definitely circle back to them and see where those discussions um, where those discussions are at. But five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred is how you can join me this evening. We'll take one more break uh, for the evening, and then we'll be back. This is South Coast tonight. Marcus five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred is how you can join me. For the rest uh, of the evening, um, so I'll get more updates on that septic issue, um, but there's still a lot going on um, elsewhere. Uh, remember that there is still the st- uh, staffing, that city council agenda, that Adam Bass is going to be there. He's going to be there on, uh, for, for that meeting on the 23rd. That's apparently going to be a very big day for South Coast because you've got the septic hearing, um, the septic uh, public forum in Dartmouth, and then you've got the city council meeting uh, in New Bedford. And on that agenda, on the, the items on that agenda include um, Mitchell's uh, amendments to the pay raises, the believe Carol Pimentel's nomination to the Vogue Tech School Committee, she might get, uh, they might um, send her out with a recommendation of no further action. If they do that, that means her nomination's uh, essentially squashed and they'll have to resubmit her nomination. Um, Mitchell will have to resubmit her nomination, so it'll take another few months for that to go through committee. I frankly think it's a little... I think it's a little... I'm going to be honest with you. I I think they should wait until the board three fills their seat to vote on that, but whatever. Um, I guess. I don't know. I I think they should wait until... They're basically doing it this close to the election day. I mean, it's pretty clear that there's people in the council that don't want her nomination to to, to go forward, and it's pretty clear that some of the one of the reasons for the emissions policy, which by the way, there's a federal lawsuit now against the emissions policy of New Bedford Vogue and Vogue schools, um, every Vogue school in the Commonwealth. But, um, but I think it's a little honestly, I think it's a little shady to want to kill her nomination just before the Ward Three special, uh, just before the Ward Three special election to fill the seat because they know Mitchell's going to have the votes. It's a little shady. I think you're divesting people of Ward 3 from the opportunity to send, um, to basically be able to vote for the emissions policy for the Vogue schools that they're paying their taxes for. Um, And, you know, frankly, going forward with all this, there's a federal lawsuit going on and all of that. I think it's incumbent upon us and here in Fairhaven, for sure, and in Dartmouth, um, to be more cognizant of who gets sent to that school committee and start speaking out there, right? Um, Because it's definitely not something I've paid attention to a lot, but it's something I'm going to pay attention to a lot more now. I think a lot of people are because, again, there's a federal lawsuit. There is a lawsuit filed in federal court against the Vogue Tech, not just this Vogue Tech school. Well, it's basically against, it's against the state, but it's because of this Vogue school here in New Bedford that services New Bedford Fall River, I mean, New Bedford Fairhaven and Dartmouth, the Diamond Vogue uh, school that services um, Fall, you know, Fall River, Westport, Somerset, et cetera, and pretty much all the Vogue schools in the, uh, in the Commonwealth. So that is on the agenda, Carol Pimentel's nomination, that's on the agenda, um, they're going to, there's some counselors that are going to try to kill it. So, um, and it's because of the emissions policy. It's because of uh, her position on the emissions policy, but, um, there's also, uh, counselor Gomes's motion on the, uh, for the public safety committee, um, to try to get, uh, basically a hearing on this, 
uh, police uh, staffing shortage. Um, Mayor Mitchell was on with Tim uh, last week. He talked about some of the goings on in the union negotiations, um, the, the the labor contracts. Um, so there'll be a lot of discussion, uh, I think, on that probably on Thursday as well, or they just send it to the committee and look to have that discussion more in the public safety committee. Um, but, you know, that is an issue that we brought up here and has been talked about a lot now is the um, the staffing shortages for the New Bedford Police Department. So that's going to be a big meeting to look forward to. Plus, you got in Dartmouth the septic hearing. So Thursday is going to be a big day. Apparently, you're going to want to be you're going to want to be tuned in here. You're going to want to so we can hear from Adam Bass so that we can hear from um, uh, whoever, maybe somebody at the at the um, at the public hearing for the uh, septic. Actually, I'm going to work on that. We'll see if we can get someone to call in for that too. We're going to try to get some live updates from these meetings so that you know what's going on in real time and get the real time reactions because I think those are pretty important. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred is how you can join me this evening, or I'll take your messages on the WBSM uh, app chat. Um, And, and that's pretty much it. That's what I got. It's great to be back here. I appreciate everybody who tuned in and who called in tonight. Appreciate my guests, Adam Bass, uh, our young reporter, Adam Bass, and uh, Brian Glenn Williams. Tim's got an interesting piece on WBSM.com you can check out uh, about an old South Coast website that correctly predicted the results of the 2020 election back in 2006. I got to say, 2006 was one of my favorite years, just for me personally. 2006 was a real good year. 2006 was a good year. I like 2006, 2010, 2014 was pretty good too. 2022 was great. 2022 was really good. That's got to be up there. So those are a few of the years that I, I, uh, 2006 was a great year, but there's an interesting website called South Coast 24-7 that was around in 2006. And, um, uh, Tim's got a link to it and, uh, it's pretty, it's, it's interesting. It's really fun to to look at. It's really fun to look at. So definitely, um, definitely check that out. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I guess it was part of the South coast media group, which was owned by the state, you know, which was also published at standard times. They were trying to, I think, reach a younger audience. I mean, at the time, 2006, I was a junior in high school, I was 17 years old, so um, I wasn't really interested in much newspaper stuff, and it seemed like by younger, probably more in the uh, adult, you know, uh, early 20s to early 30s demographic um, that I definitely wasn't at the time. So um, check that piece out. I think it's really interesting and really funny, and definitely click the link for that website um, because I was just during my brief time in the commercial break sort of just browsing through it and it's quite a gem. It's it's pretty interesting to look back. It's an interesting uh, piece of history, sort of enshrined into the archives of the uh, the digital world. Um, so, anyway, thanks so much. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, uh, Will Senna of the New Bedford Light.